Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad the light in the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad the light in the sight. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad removed the dust. Removed the dust of unbelief. Prophet Muhammad brought us. Brought us a good relief. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad the light in the sight. May peace be upon him. May Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah, blessings and peace be on the messenger of Allah, dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to another episode of our series, More Than Honey and Black Seed. Uh, last time we were talking about uh, the difference between the guidance the Prophet ﷺ gave us in regulating the profession of medicine interactions between the various parts, uh, elements of this profession and providers, uh, liability of the physicians and we were talking about certain uh, hadith that are uh, divine in origin either because there are indications that they're divine in origin such as when it is impossible for the Prophet to have known uh, from the uh, experience uh, that he uh, accumulated during his time or uh, he clearly states that it is divine in origin or it's supported in the Quran we said all of this is part of the revelation that is binding that we must comply with um, and must comply with means that if it is obligate, obligatory, obligatory, recommended, recommended and so on and so forth. But the, the hardcore medical science is what uh, I believe that it is not part of the revelation. In other words, that what the Prophet ﷺ prescribed as medications for the treatment of particular specific diseases and I have to caution you that you will not be able to understand what I am saying correctly and completely unless you have listened to the whole series, at least the last couple of episodes. Uh, but so, so the part about you know, specific uh, prescriptions for specific diseases, uh, there is a number of scholars, including Ibn Khaldun and Qadi Ayad, Waliullah Dahlawi, Muhammad Abu Zahra uh, from the contemporaries, and Muhammad Suleiman al Ashkar, and so on. Uh, although they are not the majority, but a number of scholars said that this is not part of the revelation. This is from the experience of the Prophet ﷺ, like his experience in war tactics, like his experience in agriculture and other issues. Uh, what uh, should we do with this part? What should we do with uh, this part? Should it be neglected? Absolutely not. Who is most, mo most worthy of correctness? Who is most worthy of guidance? Who is most worthy of... Uh, being, uh, you know, gifted with correct uh, understanding of issues uh, than the Prophet ﷺ. Now, that does not mean that he was sent as a chief physician. He was sent as a chief guide. But what I'm saying is, even when he prescribed things, uh, that prescription is coming out from someone who is complete in wisdom, from someone who is complete in, in good... Uh, uh, intentions uh, and so on and so forth so we must study those uh, prescriptions but those prescriptions may not be the most superior for the particular diseases for which they were prescribed because advancement in medical sciences would bring about more medications and more um, stronger tra treatments stronger uh, cures for uh, various uh, conditions. So uh, I would add, you know, the scholars who said that the Prophet ﷺ is not infallible in those matters uh, and, and mistakes could take place, uh, I would uh, have to take a middle position between them and the scholars who said that in matters of medicine, the Prophet ﷺ was completely infallible and it, it is in fact medicine that comes from the divine and it is certain. The middle position is that I would say that it is not you know, from the divine in, in origin because the Prophet ﷺ used to use his own reason in matters of the dunya, war tactics and, and agriculture and medicine and so on. The Prophet ﷺ used to treat himself and accept uh, treatment before he was uh, commissioned uh, before he received the, the, the mission of prophethood 
and he continued to use the medications that he, were use, he was using before, and we have no indication that he was actually given a new list of medications and the old uh, medications that he used before, he was told not to use. And we mentioned the hadith, if there is a cure in, in some of your medications, then it is in this, this, and that. And, you know, the uh, cutting of the instrument of the copper, the, the drink of honey, and uh, cauterization, which indicates that the Prophet ﷺ was prescribing to them medications that were common, known, popular, of their own uh, medications. Uh, uh, so we, we've talked enough about this, but like I said, the, I would add, uh, or the, how do I, uh, you know, how am I saying that the, I have a, pretty much a middle position between the various positions? Um, I would say that there is no possibility that there will be contradiction with something that is part of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and a confirmed scientific fact and a confirmed scientific fact, because Allah would protect the revelation. After all, you know, what the Prophet ﷺ said is sort of mixed all together, mixed all together, and the sorting out is somewhat uh, uh, difficult. So I would say that this is a promise and a challenge, you know, whatever you want to call it, depends on your position, that there is nothing the Prophet ﷺ said that is uh, harmful, that is in conflict with a scientific uh, fact. So in terms of error, to that extent, I would say no, uh, because of Allah's, uh, Allah's intent to preserve the credibility uh, of the Sharia, the Prophet would not be left to make an error uh, that is not corrected during his lifetime. After all, also, some of his ummah will not believe in the position of those scholars. After all, those scholars are the minority of the scholars. The majority of scholars consider his medicine to be actually divine in origin and to be uh, certain. So th those people who will follow the majority, I would say that it is guaranteed that they will not be harmed by using some medicine the Prophet ﷺ prescribed for a particular uh, indication. Now, does that medicine necessarily have to be the best, the most superior? Here I would say no. It will not be harmful, it will not be conflict in conflict with, with science, but it may not be the most superior because there is advancement in, in, in medical sciences. Uh, people may use this, but people will be harmed if the deferred treatment, conventional treatment, because they go to this, you know, prophetic medicine clinic that is run uh, by someone who is not a physician, who does not know much about uh, uh, medicine, or by self-treating, uh, which is not which is not a good idea. The Prophet ﷺ himself uh, used to be treated by physicians. How would how would we then take those uh, take those hadith and use them to self treat when he himself, the source of the hadith, used to be treated by physicians? In fact, Urwa ibn Zubair asked Aisha, "I don't, you know, wonder about your knowledge, or I, you know, I marvel. I don't marvel at your knowledge in Deen." or in the lineages of the Arabs, you know, uh, but I, what I marvel at and wonder uh, about is, is your knowledge in medicine. And Aisha said to him, because the Prophet Sallallahu when he became sick, uh, he was being treated by various physicians from, from, from uh, throughout Arabia. Delegations would come to the Prophet Sallallahu for Arabia, and the physicians would prescribe for him, for him medications, and he uh, w uh, and I would mix them. I would mix them for him. That's that's how she learned about all of uh, those, you know, uh, medications. I would mix them for him and, and and give them to him. So the source of those ahadith used to be treated by uh, physicians. So we should not be using those ahadith to self-treat, or we should not be going to someone who is not really credible, who does not know much about medicine. Uh, to, to treat us uh, w uh, with, uh, with those uh, hadith or with uh, herbs or food items that have been mentioned in those hadith. 
I will tell you this, you will not be harmed by using anything that was prescribed by the Prophet Sallallahu I, I am sure of this, but you'll be harmed if you defer the pursuit of medical treatment from a qualified physician that has experience in your particular uh, area, uh, disease. Uh, so don't do that. Do them simultaneously. <clears throat> and when you do them simultaneously, that does not compromise your alliance. That does not compromise your certainty in uh, the deen. I am telling you, the Prophet ﷺ himself used to be treated by physicians. So go and seek uh, credible advice from a credible physician. But at the same time, if you want to use honey, if you want to use black seed, if you want to use boiled barley, if you want to use senna, if you want to use something, that, all of those things that the Prophet ﷺ had prescribed, go ahead and use them. You will not be harmed, inshallah. I would also add, you know, so I, I, what I'm trying to say here is there will be no conflict, and that's a challenge between something the Prophet ﷺ said and any proven scientific uh, fact. I would also say that you will not be harmed, but there may be other medications that are superior <clears throat> to uh, the herbs or <clears throat> the food items or the medicines that the Prophet ﷺ prescribed in his time for particular diseases. After all, remember, the Prophet ﷺ did not prescribe for them medications from China or Latin America, and medications were not limited to Arabia. You know, there were medications for in other places also. He only prescribed what, they, what was there. This is extremely important. This is extremely important because the Prophet ﷺ did not want them to rely in matters of science, in matters of uh, the affairs of this world on the transmitted. The, he did not want to kill exploration. When a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ to ask him to, uh, for, uh, to, to pray for her, for, for her cure, she had epilepsy, she used to have seizures, and then she asked the Prophet ﷺ to pray for her. And the Prophet said to her, I, if you want, if you wish, if you so wish, I'll pray for you. But, you know, he said to her, if you so wish or will, I will pray uh, for you. But if you be patient, I will guarantee Jannah for you, paradise. So the woman, you know, being, you know, certainly a righteous woman, uh, said, I know, I would be, I would be patient uh, and I would, I would take that prize, uh, the ultimate prize, paradise. And then she asked him to make, to make dua for her that she would not uncover, you see, the modesty of the Muslim woman while she is uh, seizing, that she would not uncover while, while she is seizing, and he made dua uh, for her. The Prophet here wants to say that do not rely on me for such matters. Do not rely on me for such matters. It is to teach them because if he makes dua for her, he makes dua for the other one. Someone comes and asks him to make dua for them uh, to be rich. Someone comes and asks the, to him to make dua for him to be knowledgeable and so on and so forth. Then the whole generation of the Sahaba would have not been a good role model for us, would have not been something that we look up to as a role model, because it's a generation that was given everything easy. The Prophet was making dua for this to be rich, making dua for the other one to be cured, making dua for the third one to be knowledgeable, and they would not be a human, a human generation that would work as role models for us, as an example for us uh, to look up to. The Prophet meant for this generation to be human generation that we can find a role model in them when we come back, we will have more to say. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Alhamdulillah, welcome back. Now, uh, we will actually talk about one of the prescriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember here, this is therapeutic now, medicine. This is not preventive, preventative medicine. And you may think that I will not talk about therapeutic medicine because I said 
those prescriptions uh, uh, do not necessarily have to be divine in origin. Some of them are divine in origin. We said, mentioned in the Quran, honey, uh, or have uh, indications in the hadith, either explicitly, such as if the hadith of the hijama is correct, that the angels were telling the Prophet Sallallahu to enjoin his, uh, enjoin his ummah to uh, make hijama uh, when he ascended if this is authentic, then this would have certainly an indication <clears throat> that would be explicit that it has a divine origin. And uh, there is also uh, the hadith that would have indication, such as the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ uh, would have not been able to know, or the issues of the Prophet would have not been able to know without being revealed to him because they were not uh, part of the experience of his own people. Uh, but even in therapeutic medicine, even the prescriptions of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, if they were not divine, some of them are divine in origin, but if they were not divine in origin, coming from Allah, part of uh, Azza wa Jal, exalted as He, part of the infallible revelation, they are coming out from the complete mind, uh, the best of, of minds. Again, not the chief doctor, but the, the, the wisest of all people, the greatest of all people, the, the most sensible of all people, which is the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, we should not neglect to study them because you will find much benefit in them. Whatever the Prophet selected from the practices of his own people, he selected them using his complete wisdom uh, and uh, sense. One of them is At-Talbina, and that is the one that we will talk about right now. At-Talbina. At-Talbina is boiled barley, sometimes mixed with honey and sometimes not mixed with honey. So, At-Talbina, boiled barley, it is not, you know, it is, it is uh, not to boil the seeds of barley and drink the water. That would be inferior. Uh, that is the barley drinks, the barley drinks that you drink all over the place. But actually, you crush the seeds of uh, barley and you boil them. You keep on boiling them with water until it's a little bit thick. Uh, sometimes it could be thick enough to eat it, but it may be, uh, it may not need to be that thick. Uh, it depends on your taste. It depends on your preference. So you can make it, um, you know, a little bit thinner uh, to drink it. Uh, or you make uh, the consistency of it a little bit thicker to eat it. Uh, you, if you mix it with honey, that, because it, it may not taste that good without honey. So if you mix it with honey, it will taste a little better, and at the same time, you will reap some of the benefits of honey. Honey, that's divine in origin. That's in the Quran, Fihish Fawl nas There is cure in it for people, divine, in the Quran. So mix it with some honey so that you sweeten it. At-Talbina, boiled barley, crushed seeds of barley, boiled in water, and you add honey to sweeten uh, the, that mi mixture or, and, and also for uh, the benefits of honey. <clears throat> At-Talbina has been mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He told us, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالتَّلْبِينَ فَإِنَّهَا مُجِمَّةٌ لِفُؤَادِ الْمَرِيدِ وَتَذْهَبُ بِبَعْضِ الْحُزْنِ مُجِمَّةٌ لِفُؤَادِ الْمَرِيدِ وَتَذْهَبُ بِبَعْضِ الْحُزْنِ I prescribe for you talbina, various reports of the hadith. I prescribe for you talbina because it is good for the heart of the patient and it takes away some of the sadness. It takes away some of the sadness. In fact, in, in, in another report, the one that you will see uh, on the screen here, uh, at the bottom of the screen, the Prophet ﷺ said that it washes your, your stomach like you wash the dirt off your face. Like, you know, it washes the stomach of one of you like you wash the dirt off uh, your face. So now the Prophet ﷺ told us three things about the Talbina. Let's go over at Talbina to see where does this all come from. The three things are good for the heart, it washes out your, your stomach. In other words, you know, it, it, it is uh, a laxative uh, that, that will treat constipation and so on. And the other thing is, it takes away 
some of uh, the sadness. Now, look at the screen, and you will find the, in, the, 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 the composition of uh, barley. Uh, if you look at the screen here, you'll find that barley, on the top here, it has dietary fiber, dietary uh, fiber. And it would tell you, according to the wor world's, world's healthiest foods classification or rating, that it's a very good source of dietary fiber. You go down a little bit, selenium. Down a little bit, tryptophan, uh, copper, uh, manganese, phosphorus. It has all of those. Uh, now, uh, I want you to remember what? I want you to remember tryptophan and remember uh, fiber. For now, remember tryptophan and remember fiber. Why do I want you to remember tryptophan? Because do you know uh, most of the medications that psychiatrists use to treat depression and to treat anxiety, uh, they're called selective uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Don't worry about the jargon of physicians. Uh, it means that those medications increase the level of serotonin in your brain in your brain, the increase the level of serotonin in your brain. That serotonin is the comforting, uh, uh, the comforting substance that helps relieve depression and anxiety. It is also used for panic disorder and so on and so forth. And anxiety and depression actually make up for the very vast majority of mental disorders and psychiatric conditions. That's actually the bread and butter of psychiatrists. And selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they just increase your serotonin. Now, the boiled barley is an excellent source of tryptophan, uh, you know, then tryptamine and then serotonin and so on. So it, it gets transformed into your body. Eventually, it becomes uh, serot it, serotonin. And that serotonin, like uh, you know, this is this does not require the mention of studies. Everybody knows Zoloft, you know, Paxil, Prozac, Lexapro, Celexa, uh, uh, any med any medication that is being used is actually dependent on uh, this uh, serotonin. So when the Prophet ﷺ says, الحزن, and it takes away some of the sadness, we have it right here. It's a good source of tryptophan. If, and it will provide you the precursor of serotonin, which is being used nowadays in modern and contemporary medications to treat depression and anxiety. It takes away some of the sadness, as the Prophet ﷺ said. When we come back in the next episode, inshallah, we will be talking about it talbina some more. We couldn't finish the, today, but inshallah, Next episode, we'll be talking a little more about Talbina. So until I see you then, enjoy the blessings and favors of Allah on you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad removed the dust. Removed the dust of unbelief. Prophet Muhammad brought us. Brought us a good relief. May peace be upon him. May peace.